Bulls for the lead. No good. Rebound, Joey Murray. Ron Baker leads it up. Yes! With two seconds to go. Got to finish now with Thank you. Oh my God. are the Kansas Class 3A State Football Champions. And that's the game. Scott City has done it. They're the Class 3A State Champions. What a game. When they asked me to uh, coach with Glenn, uh, I thought it would probably be about a year or two that I would be doing it. And after I got working with Glenn, I knew that it would be something that um, I wanted to do longer. And 17 years passed before uh, this job came open at you know the high school here, and I knew that I would have to you know resign from coaching and not being able to work with Glenn, and that was probably one of the hardest things. I had to give up. Um, you know, started out here when I was uh, just out of college and uh, kind of took me under his wing. So you, everything that I thought I knew, I, I kind of had to relearn with him. Um, he was able to uh, teach me things on how to prepare for uh, games and, and different situations. So, um, coaching with Coach O'Neill has been, uh, I mean, just unbelievable. You know, the uh, the amount of knowledge that he has uh, and that he shares with his assistant coaches is just unbelievable. Many don't realize what happens behind the scenes in a coaching career. Behind every great coach is a backbone, a strong supporter, a coach's wife. Today, I have the opportunity of speaking with Jenny O'Neill the wife of Scott City's most winningest coach. Describe how emotional and hard it can be from your standpoint as opposed to um, everybody else that goes through sports. That's hard. Um, it probably wasn't as emotional before my kids got involved in it um, at the high school level when it actually meant something. Um, once the kids actually got in there, sometimes I felt like I was more of a referee. Um, they would bring home um, complaints or, you know, I mean, still be talking football, basketball when they came home to the table. Um, I could tell instantly when the kids walked through the door um, if practice was a good one or not. Um, if I could tell which one came in first, um, I was always going to go towards the other one, it seemed like. Were you always willing to be a part of this lifestyle? <laughs> I had no idea um, what it involved whatsoever. Um, you know, I was involved in athletics, cheerleading, those different kinds of things, but not coming from a background where you had a parent that was in there, um, I had no idea, you know, what all it would involve, the time that it would take, um, the time that I, I'd be away from Glenn, uh, but that's my life. <laughs> now I don't know anything different about it, so mm -hmm. I can't say I'd I wouldn't go back and change it, definitely. You know, I, I think, you know, Glenn has impacted my life in many ways, just from the things that I've learned from him. You know, he's, he's taught me that it's not about winning, even though he's won a multitude of games, it, it's, it's more about life in general. And the life lessons that I think he's taught the boys that have come through, uh, you know, you, you see that when you're playing a football game, uh, our kids go knock somebody down, but when it's over, they pick them back up again. And I mean, that's learned, and they've learned those kind of things from Glenn. And I'll take to my grave all these things that uh, he's taught me. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with the most winningest coach in Scott City, Coach Glenn O'Neill. Describe to me what your favorite part about coaching is. I, I don't know if there's a favorite part. I think there's a, a bunch of, of little things that makes uh, you know coaching very you know fun to me. You, you know, num number one, it's uh, 
you know, the ability to work with youth. And, and you know, to, to me, coaching is teaching and teaching is coaching. So, I mean, you know, my, my job, the everyday job, you know, not the coaching job, of course, is at the elementary and working with, uh, you know, the, the younger youth. But, but it's, it's still part of a stage that, that goes into the coaching and, you know, just working with the high school athletes is very enjoyable. I mean, you know, they, they keep you young. You know, you can tell by my gray hair, I'm, I'm not the youngest guy around, but, you know, it, it, it is, a, you know, a privilege to work with them. They, they just kind of keep you going. Tell me how you got into coaching and what your favorite sport is to coach. Probably got into coaching way back when I was in high school. You, you know, like a lot of Scott City, you know, guys work with, work with the red kids. You know, I always had a, kind of an interest of, uh, you know, the X's and O's as far as for football, you know, basketball, what was not my favorite sport in, in high school. I was more of a, you know, football junkie than, than I was anything else. And, you know, just uh, thinking about how, how you can a attack another team or, you know, draw up a play that, you know, uses your strengths to your advantage. You know, th those were things that, that come about a long time ago, probably when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. And, you know, those things just kind of stayed with me, you know, throughout, throughout this system. And, you know, fr from there, as far as, you know, progression of coaching, you know, I, I really didn't have a plan when I got to college as far as what sport I wanted to go with. And, you know, I played college football and ran track, so I knew, you know, football might be the first one. But, but when I interviewed for my first job, you know, I didn't get the football job. And in the same district, like two months later, the basketball came open. And, and being fresh out of college, it was, you know, grab the first job that you could get. And, you know, fortunately for me, I didn't look into their background because they'd only won three, foot, or three basketball games in like three years. So, you know, there was nowhere to go but up. And, you know, they took a chance on me and from there, you know, things have just, you know, worked out pretty well. Coach O'Neill is, is, is very prepared for everything that he does. Um, and, and, that, and that, you know, transfers into the players. Um, but I, don't, I, I can't remember a time, you know, stepping onto the field for football or basketball, um, taking the floor where our, our players were not prepared. Oh, he, he pays attention to everything. You know, I think one thing is his practice. His practices are so organized and, you know, everything's in a five to 10 minute period, sometimes 15, but most everything's short periods where you're, you're gonna focus on the small things and then, you know, the small individual things and then we gotta bring them into the team picture. And uh, that's a big issue, getting the kids to understand because for a while, you know, we kind of see that, that uh, we're working on the fundamentals and the individual periods and we come together as a team that we're not using them, so. You know, but the organization, the practice schedule really, really builds the team, I think. And uh, he's just always, always ready for practice, real, real organized. Uh, you know, game, game time, it's the same thing. Very prepared for about any, any, anything that could occur on the field, anything different. They jump out in a different uh, defense or in a different set. He's always got something in mind offensively, what he's going to do based on what their defense is doing. You know, he's such a student of the game. Uh, I, I think it starts with that. Um, you know, he's, he's had so much success at, at every place that he's been. And, you know, a lot of times you, you could kind of rest on that, you know, your past successes. But um, he, uh, he, he's constantly learning, constantly looking for other ways to, you know, tweak things or, or implement new, new ideas um, th that's going to give his team the best chance of winning. Um, so I think being a student of the game um, definitely is, is a key to that. And then again, his preparation. Um, the guy is, is very detailed. Um, X's and O's type of guy that, uh, you know, really, really knows the game. Um, other than that, you know, I, he spends an, an enormous amount of time, uh, you know, on film, uh, looking at other teams, finding ways that we, you know, may be able to kind of take advantage of them um, in certain situations. You know, uh, you know, X's and O's, I, I really get a kick out of, you know, for football and basketball both as far as, uh, you know, diagramming. I mean, I, I don't know how much paper I go through at night, you know, just either stealing stuff off TV from, you know, professional games, college games, or just even, you know, coming up with things that might fit our personnel. X's and O's, different plays constantly um, at the dinner table, you know, and I understand mm -hmm. you can't turn it off, you know, right away when you leave something. So yeah, they came home, a lot of conversations were that, you know, I just kind of listen, whatever. I could learn quite a bit of things. You put in a lot of extra hours aside from during the season. Can you describe a little bit of how off season is preparing for your seasons? It, it's crazy. And you know, the first thing you got to thank my wife for letting me do it, you know, because I'm, I'm gone a lot. And you know, some of it is a, uh, you know, time where you get paid and some of it is a, uh, not some of it, a lot of it is volunteer time. You know, as, as soon as, you know, the school year is over, you know, you're, you're already, you know, preparing, you know, for the summer weight program as far as, you know, 
how, how to try to try to make the, the boys the best athletes that we possibly can make them. And I, I say boys because I'm, I'm not with the girls program anymore but with the weights, but you know the you know that, that that's probably step one. And, and 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 close behind step one is probably what are we doing for basketball as far as you know summer preparation. You know we, we do a lot of open gym stuff. What we do a lot of uh, you know time where it's just one or two players in the gym. You know we play summer league. You know we'll, we'll have a summer camp, and then you know as soon as uh, you know June is is finished, we'll, we'll jump into the football part of it with the same thing, and you know be up around the field house or be up around the practice field. I mean you know two or three times a week with uh, either a couple players or maybe a group of players playing seven on seven, and of course you know you got your team camp where everybody's involved. And besides, you know, that aspect of it, you know, a lot of time, you know, like I mentioned early, you know, as far as, you know, being at home, trying to see, you know, what is our philosophy for the next year as far as on offense and defense. And that it doesn't change a lot, but it has to change a little bit just because the personnel is different. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, unseen time that, that, that all coaches go through. I know, you know, Coach Turner helps a lot. And, you know, that's part of our success here has been the stability of our assistant coaches you know, putting in time also. So, I mean, hourly, it's, uh, you know, you, you probably don't get paid very well, you know, but as far as, you know, what it means to you, you, you get paid a great deal as, as far as, uh, you know, your satisfaction with, with the job. His work ethic, his knowledge of the game, his study of the game. I mean, I don't know of another coach that, you know, can do the things that he's done, you know, to, to be as successful as he, as he is, you know, there's something special. I mean, a lot of coaches can put in time and a lot of coaches maybe even put in more time than him, but there's something special about him that makes him as successful as he, as he is. And I don't, think any, I don't think there's any one thing that makes him that special. I think it's a combination of, of just who he is. And, and he's a gifted, gifted coach is what he is. Like I said earlier, you're the most winningest coach in Scott City. Um, what do you think sets yourself aside from other coaches and makes you so successful? Probably the first thing is I don't think about it. You, you know, it, it just kind of happens. Uh, you, you know, but but then you start to go back a little bit. I mean, you know, what, what's the first thing? You know, the the first thing is probably having you know coaches that that you work with that, that are very good. Also, you know, it, it definitely has not been a one man show here. You know, uh, you know, basketball wise, I man, Coach Holt was with us for you know 16, 17 years, and you know, very good people person and, and skills coach. And you know he's uh, he related to the players where you know I was the bad guy in practice and you always got to be the good guy, you know. So so that that part of it always helps as far as having, having that partner. And you know, football wise, you know we, we've had uh, numerous you know assistant coaches that, that have been very good, you know. But but as far as you know, why are we successful? You know, people ask that a lot, and you know that that's a question that I ask myself. It you know I mean I say you know. We, are, are you part of it or are you just, you know, successful because of the Scott City tradition? And, and, and I think it's, you know, hopefully a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. You know, th things that, that we stress, I think, within our program make us successful. You know, we, we, accountability is a word that we, we use a lot and it's just not, you know, on the football field or basketball court. You know, it's in the classroom and it's in your, you know, week, weekend activities. You know, accountability, you know, is defined for us as, you know, doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, when you're supposed to do it. And if you can kind of take care of that aspect of accountability, you're, you're on the, the, the right step to begin with. And then, and then from there, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I think we, we coach with a passion. You know, we, we enjoy coaching, we enjoy being successful, we enjoy competing, you know, as coaches. And I think that rubs off to our players. You know, if they see the, the coaches are excited to be at practice, you know, I, I think they have to be excited. They, they know that, you know, we're investing, you know, something into their lives. And, you know, if you go from there, you know, it's, uh, you know, been very fortunate with the type of athletes we've had. You know, Scott City has been well known, you know, throughout the state for, you know, a ton of years. You, you know, if you go back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, 
you, you know, there's that Scott City tradition and pride and the winning, you know, attitude on more, more so maybe on the football field, you know, as far as uh, year in and year out. You know, so, but, but basketball-wise, I think, you know, since I've been here, we, we've built that tradition up, you know, because if you go back, you know, the last state appearance, you know, by a Scott City team before I got here was 1979. You know, the last state championship was 1959. You know, so, you know, I, I think it's a, a little luck. It's, uh, you know, part of it is being able where the, the kids relate to, to me as a coach and then also our assistant coaches and they, they trust in what we're doing. And, and from there, you know, it's a, you, you got to give a lot of credit to the players because they're, they're the ones that are actually winning the games. You know, the coaches are just trying to stay out of the way for the most part sometimes. We push him hard, but, you know, at the same time, he's very respectful to the kids, and I, I think they appreciate that. Um, you know, we're trying to instill things besides just, you know, we want to win football games or basketball games or at track meets or anything else. When you're young and you come in, you know, from college, you, you, you think you know everything and then uh, you, you don't. Uh, the, the amount of knowledge, like I said, he has um, that he shares with us is, is just unbelievable. And I think our players um, have really been able to show that uh, throughout the years, um, you know, with their success. Luckily in Scott City, we haven't had the ups and downs as much. We're lucky we have the traditional and we have the winning um, tradition going on. How did you end up in Scott City and what has made you stay here? Well, I've been a high school coach for 10 years and a college coach. I, when I was in college, I got to be a grad assistant for two years. So you know, I already had you know, 12 years of coaching experience. And we, we took a chance and we, I was in Frankfort, Kansas, which is a 1A, 2A school for my first nine years as a head coach. And we, we wanted to kind of venture out and, and kind of see if, uh, you know, we could take the same type of success we had in Frankfurt to a bigger school. Well, we, we, we took a chance and went down to Wellington, but my wife did not get a job down there. You know, she was an elementary teacher and uh, kind of a reading coordinator up in Frankfurt for, for seven or eight years. And when we went to, to Wellington, you know, they promised her a job and said you'd get the, the first chance at an open vacancy. Well, so, I mean, so she worked as a, as a para you know, while I was coaching and the next year they had some vacancies that come open and they weren't in a whole lot of hurry to, to get her a, a, an interview. And then, you know, we we're kind of wondering that, you know, we can't survive on one and a half, you know, salaries. And, you know, when I started looking at vacancies, you know, Scott City, you know, at that time was really well known for the football because, you know, this is in the mid 90s and Coach Dunham had, you know, just, just left like a year before. So, I mean, you know, they're coming off, you know, three state championships and a runner up you know, in the last, you know, seven to eight years, so we, we knew Scott City had athletes. He is a superb tactician, and I really don't know how he can consistently get football success and then turn right around and have an undefeated basketball season. You know, it just happened that the superintendent that was at Scott City at that time, you know, Dr. Barrett, what was my superintendent in Northeast Kansas, you know, so, you know, we, we got an interview set up and, you know, what he told me was, you know, I can get you in the door, but, but I can't get you the job, you know, it's up to you. And, you know, we, we come up, had a pretty good interview and my wife interviewed at the same time for the math position at the middle school. And, you know, that, that's what got us here. You know, as, as far as what has kept us here, you know, not number one, you know, the winning has to be part of it because if a coach isn't winning, not number two, they're, they're, you don't have the choice, you know, they're, they're not going to keep you around. You know, so, you know, with, with the winning tradition, that, that helped, you know, to, to keep me here as far as the school board and, you know, the athletic director and those people are involved. But as far as, you know, why we stayed here, you know, we, we had, you know, three different, you know, children, you know, come through the you know, school system and, you know, we, we really did not want them to, to have to go somewhere else in the middle of their high school career. You know, what we figured if, if we're going to leave, it would have probably been before, you know, Allie would have got into the high school. Then once, you know, she's a senior, you know, Brett is a, a freshman. And once Brett is a, a senior, then, then Trey is a sophomore. So it, it's kind of tough to, to leave that part. You know, we, we had, you know, different offers as far as, you know, from bigger schools for football and basketball to go ahead and leave. And then, then we, we started saying, you know, why Scott City instead of, you know, somewhere else. Then, then you start, you know, looking at the tradition and as far as the aspects of, you know, why you want to be somewhere. You know, you know, you know first for the tradition, I mean, you, you know, we've won five state championships in basketball, we had two state runner-up. You know, for football, you know, we won one and we got runner-up another year. And, you know, a lot of kids don't realize, but, you know, I was on Coach Turner's, you know, track, you know, staff, you know, for, for a year. And, you know, we, we won a state championship with, with Coach as, uh, 
you know, the guy in charge, but you know, I, I had a lot of uh, different athletes that they were winning medals as far as in the distance races and some relays, and that made it enjoyable. And then you say, you know, why do you stay? Well, that, that, that's when those job offers come in and you start to compare. And you know, the first thing that, that stands out about Scott City is uh, the community support that you get. You know, not only from the, the parents, but, but also, you know, from, you know, people that are just, you know, kind of athletic junkies that, that want your, your school to, to be successful. And, you know, if you look at our field house and you look at our facilities, you know, they're, they're second to none probably at the 3A level. And when you get up to the 4A, you know, there's probably a lot of uh, communities that have better facilities or at least similar fa facilities. But then, you know, then the other aspects come into it as far as your, your tradition and your pride and, you know, the type of kids that you're around. Because, you know, one of the greatest things about coaching it is, doesn't happen on the court or the field. It happens when people leave. You know, and you, you see the guys that, uh, you know, played for you, you know, five years later, 10 years later. And, and right now, you know, my first guys, you know, they're, they're 20 years gone. And, you know, then when we see them, you know, that we, we still have something that we can talk about and communicate about. And, and that makes it special, you know. So, you know, that, that has to be a big part of, you know, staying also, not, not just in the sports part, but also, you know, kind of the, the support we've received from, from people. Many don't realize how much time and effort a coach's wife puts in. Can you describe to me what your weeks consist of during the seasons in which Coach O'Neill is coaching? Well, of course, it depends upon the season. Um, football starts bright and early on Monday morning um, when the coaches and the players get in. So it's an early morning on Monday mornings. Um, Monday night is typically a JV game. Um, working towards getting down to the final, you know, Friday night action in football. Um, it gets a little more intense. I don't get to see a whole lot of him. Take, take it on Thursday night. Um, Friday night's the game. As soon as the game's over, a little bit of celebration when we win, but then we go right back to focusing on next game. Um, Saturday, Sunday, constant watching film, making X's and O's. Um, Sunday night, coaches meeting. So it's probably me more of the um, adjusting at home to schedules different meal times, when can I do laundry, when can I not do laundry. Um, but other than that, that's a typical week for football. Um, basketball's a little different. Um, he's not away as much in basketball season because um, he's not working with as many coaches. Still a lot of time is spent, you know, watching film, those kinds of things. Um, the difference with basketball probably is we have two to three nights of competition compared to um, the one typically in football, but um, I guess with the use of huddle where they exchange film um, When we first started this whole process he had to get up early on Saturday mornings, you know and go and trade films But that's not necessarily the case What is your best memory throughout the years by coach O'Neill's side when you gave me that question a while back? That's a hard question. I guess I'd probably say um, You know the most memorable moment is the moment where we're at right there. I wouldn't go back and trade anything. Um, the memories that we've made, um, like I said before, um, I've learned to become pretty independent. Um, the miles that I've put on, um, vehicles um, to and from, a lot of memories have been made. And until you're actually a coach's wife, I don't think anybody can truly um, understand what you go through and the relationships that I've had with other coaches wives um, have been my backbone mm -hmm. um, and knowing that we could get through everything and I guess my only regret is that I never logged all my memories mm -hmm. um, you might think it's kind of strange but um, lots of memories have been made in laundry mats washing um, <laughs> uniforms and um, I'm probably going to miss those kinds of things and doing the planning um, you know when football started you know I removed myself from the sideliners club um, t-shirt orders um, filling orders with Nancy Holt I mean the memories I have and um, I probably would not have been able um, to survive especially when our kids were little um, without Nancy at my side so um, it's a great life. Um, I don't know any different, but I know I don't want to change. 
you've had the opportunity to coach both of your sons clear through when they were little all the way through high school. Can you describe to me how different it is coaching your sons compared to other people? Yeah, but at the same time, you know, I want to throw Allie in there also. You know, she always gives me a bunch of trouble where, you know, Dad, you know, you everybody knows you got two sons, but they don't yeah. know you have a daughter. <laughs> And, and, you know, we, man, I, I enjoy the heck out of, out of Coach and Allie. And then people say, well, you know, a guy's coach cannot coach, you know, girls. Well, that, that, that's not true because, uh, you, you know, I, I enjoyed it. And, and you know, we, we coached, you know, Chris Robinson and Phil Kite and some different people help with the girls, you know, at that time. And, you know, when, when they were in third and fourth grade, when we started playing, they, they didn't win a game. <laughs> you know, they, they did not. They, they, were, they were terrible. And when we got to, you know, their fourth and fifth grade year, all of a sudden they, they started splitting and winning some games and getting to the semis and the, the MAYB tournaments. And by the time they were sixth graders, you know, it seemed like a lot of times we were playing in the championships. You know, so that, that, that's part of the satisfaction with coaching is watching you know, those kids progress and get better. And then, you know, once they got to middle school and high school, it was, you know, kind of more as a dad and as a fan to watch them. You know, so, I mean, that, that, that was the first part. And, you know, I, I think it's easy as a as a dad uh, you know not in the school setting to kind of relate to you know your, your daughter as far as you know when, when they're playing kind of, kind of see you know the, the hardships that they have and also the successes mm -hmm. and the things in between there as as far as coaching the boys you know that they've been around the Scott City program you know since say they were you know Brett I think was about two and a half or three when we got here so as soon as he was four you know when we went to the field you know the boys went to the field so you know number one you know, the, the the role models that they grew up with, you know, were, were super. I mean, when you're looking at a Corbin Cooch and a Tim Portner and a Justin Miller, you know, that, that's when the boys were, were down at probably that second, third, fourth grade, you know, level. And then it's, uh, you know, you got those role models and then you want to be like them. So, I mean, so that, that was kind of the easy part to kind of get them going and get them invested into, you know, athletics. You know, as they got older, you know, then, then it become a little tougher as the coach dad compared, you know, with your relationship as, as, as with your son. You know, fortunately, you know, both of them were very good players in, in both of the sports and did really well. You know, the, the things that, that really make it different is, you know, to start with is, is kind of your, your home life. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're coaching them in high school, you know, you, you don't just leave it on the practice field or leave it on the court. You know, Brett was really easy, you, you know, because he, he kind of went with the flow and everything. You know, Trey was you know, he, he carried that chip on his shoulder a little bit, and if he had a bad day or if Dad got on at practice, we got home, and, and then the first thing Mom would do was, what did you do to Trey now? You know, so I, I was catching the you know, heat from, from that side. I didn't do anything. And, you know, sometimes that was true and sometimes it wasn't. So, you know, and the, the, another different part about coaching your, your sons is, I mean, it, it could be 8.30, 9.30 at night, and you're watching TV and something pops into your head, and all you got to do is go to the staircase and yell downstairs, hey, Brad, Trey, you know, come up here real quick, and you can even kind of, you know, what, whatever it was that, that came into your mind, you can discuss it with them. And since they were both, uh, you know, point guards and both, uh, you know, quarterbacks in football, you know, those were the guys that were, were making the changes on the line of scrimmage or making the calls on the basketball court. So that, that, that part made it real easy as far as practices and games because we, we basically, you know, thought the same. And it doesn't mean that we didn't have up and downs. It didn't mean that, you know, we didn't have different debates about, you know, how the game should be played and, and how we should act and, and things like that, you know, because that, that's kind of the natural progression. But, you know, that, that made it pretty smooth. You know, the, the tough part about being a coach, but when you have a son playing for you at the high school level, is how much or how little you can actually talk about him. You know, when a newspaper would come in, man, Brett had a great game, or Trey had a great game, can you? You know, expand on that and said, well, a little bit I can, but then if, if you know, if you expand it on too much, then it's, oh, there, there's coach and he's pushing his kids to the front and into the, the limelight. And, and that's one thing that, number one, I tried not to do as a coach. And number two, I didn't want to put the boys in that uh, position where they were going to catch, you know, crud from their teammates and, and everything else. Well, you're only getting attention because your dad is the coach. You know, so and that, that part of it, I was probably unfair, you know, to, to my own sons because they, they deserved the attention. You know, it was a lot easier to talk about, you know, a Colburn Couchman or, you know, a Luke Hayes or, you know, what, whatever very good football player we had than it was about my own son. And, and that, that's one thing that's made, you know, our, our teams really successful is nobody got the credit, you, you know. So, you know, I, I didn't, you know, have to, I didn't feel the need to and, and we didn't try to push, you know, my, my own in front of anybody else. And, and they didn't feel the need to, to place themselves above somebody else. Well, my dad's a coach and this is, you know, you know, it, it was never that attitude. And, and, and I think that's what made them fit in with their teammates, you know, so well and made them respected as, as different, you know, players and also teammates, you know, but, uh, you know, in, in hindsight, it's, if, if you're a coach and your, your sons can come through your program, 
and that the team can be very successful and your, your own sons can be very successful, then, then it makes it, you know, a feeling that can't be replaced as far as in the, the coaching part of the world. It's a very special bond and um, it's so different because there's very few people, you know, that get that opportunity um, to have their dad coach them in one sport, um, let alone multiple sports. And um, just the lessons, the life lessons and whatnot that, you know, Glenn has passed on to all three of the kids, um, you know, even with Allie, um, in terms of the athletics, um, being a good team player, um, being a humble, you know, those different kinds of things. Um, you can't ever replace that, you know, and, you know, before my kids were even involved, you know, we wouldn't miss a game. I mean, that was our life. Um, the boys and Allie, you know, that's just what we wanted to do. Follow dad, follow dad. And um, they'd always be at practices. Um, you look at any of the pictures in the past of any of them, boys are there in every single picture, um, which is really kind of cool. Um, Allie's in several of them. So, you know, when they finally did get to actually be part of them, um, going to the practices and actually competing on the teams um, that Glenn was coaching, yeah, that's amazing and uh, something that will always uh, be real special. When Brett finished, you know, that was a special group um, of players that we'd been around for so long. Um, yeah, it was tough um, knowing that you were going to say goodbye. There was going to be one piece missing um, compared to what we were used to seeing. Um, but I knew I still had Trey for two more years um, there. And the last, you know, when we finished last year at the state tournament, um, that was a pretty emotional um, moment, um, knowing that the father's son was gone. A tough four-year span, but, but when the four years is over, you know, it, it was pretty special. You know, thank you um, for everything, really, because uh, when I first got here, like I said, I, I kind of thought I was ready to be a head coach, you know, right out of, right out of the gate in college, and uh, uh, when I got here, it was, uh, was an eye-opener, you know, I'm glad I, I was not a, a head coach at, at such a young age when I, when I got out of college, um, because he's taught me so much. Um, there's so many things now that, that I can take from him, um, you know, when I, when I have the opportunity to become a head coach myself, um, that I feel will enable me to be, you know, a, a great head coach. Um, so, so thank you to him. I, I've just enjoyed his, his company and uh, kind of a quiet guy most of the times, but uh, overall he's, he's, he's been, a, been fun the 20 years getting to know him. You know, it's just one of those lasting relationships that'll last forever.